All right, we're back. <clears throat> I don't know if this is going to work or not. And I'm trying to do this, the audio with this in real time. Now I have neighbors and you can hear their dogs and they're doing their own business. Or whatever it is they need to be doing. So we're going to have extraneous noises. That's not something that I can do anything about. I kind of want to do this in real time. What I'm doing now is I'm, I'm taking this three corner file and I'm going along the fret slots in the neck. What I'm doing is I'm kind of chamfering each edge of this slot to kind of help the fret seat more fully. And uh, I'm just doing like the, the top edges of this. And uh, this is a step that I never did before. Uh, I was watching a couple of other luthiers and they we're doing this, and of course I have heard of this before. Before I turned on the camera, I took some, some 320 grit and kind of smoothed and rounded the edges of the, the fretboard so they're not very sharp. Uh, that's going to serve a couple of purposes. The, the first purpose is that it will feel good. against your hand but and the second purpose is so that when I go to finish I'll have more surface area at this corner for the finish attach and so that when I go to buff I won't end up sanding through and we're going to smooth all the edges like that all around this guitar so for the feel but also for finish work stand by I'm going to put this right here in my pocket. Hopefully it won't get shut off. Sometimes it does. But in my breast pocket there, and that's what I'm talking about is the microphone. Uh, so hopefully you can hear a little bit better. But uh, this will work or it won't. And if it don't, then I'll Run to Mutual Hill B. How are you? If you leave a bee alone most of the time, they won't bother you too much. Uh, if you go swatting at it and all kind of stuff like that, well then yeah, they'll probably sting your sorry rear end. But you wanna just give them a little bit of room. They're going about their business. Just like you were, uh, uh, when I radius this board, I sand it through this marker, I fret marker at the 12th. I don't have another piece of pearl marker, so that will have to wait to be replaced for another day. It's not a big deal. I'd prefer to replace it before I fret it, but I'm not going to waste any more time on this instrument than I have to. It's time this instrument was done. We're going to go on ahead and take care of it. And this is just a three corner file. It's a smaller one. I have some that are even smaller and I probably should have used them. But this one is working just fine. When you get it here to the body, See how close we are here? You want to be 
very careful whether we're talking about something like this or filing the fret ends or crowning the frets or anything of the sort. I should do it now. The fret wire. This is our FW74 from LMI, I believe. Uh, one of the things about fret wire that you should know is that fret wire is not clean. There's grease and stuff on the fret wire from the manufacturing process. So we're going to take some acetone and clean it off. See? We want that off of there. So. All right, now comes fretting time. What I've got. I'm going to do these one at a time and they will either and we will either do the whole thing or or I'll uh, edit and I'm just going to get the length of the fret so that I know, like that, all right? Now, Stumac sells a thing. In order to make these frets go over the edges of the binding, there's a tang that goes down in the slot. I don't know if you can see it or not. I've got to nip off a bit of that tang at each end of the fret so that they so that the, uh, the tang will be like right here to right here and uh, there won't be any tang on the fret so that it can overlap I don't know if you understand what I'm saying but that's that's where we got this is a, an example of what I have to do Perhaps if you can see that. Alright, uh, now Stumac sells a, uh, a fret tang nipper. It's like 57 bucks. But this is a pair of lineman's pliers. 
And if you look at these pliers, now fencing pliers probably do the same thing. There's a, a little nibbly kind of thing there. That's used to cut wire. What I'm going to try to do, and I've played with it and think I can get away with it, is I'm going to nibble away and take two or three bites at that fret tang till I back it away from the edge. This may work. I played, like I said, I played around with it. That doesn't mean... Okay, see? I took too much and it bent the fret. So... But if I nibble away lightly, carefully, that's what I get. I think that works really well. Uh, so what I'm going to do, that fret isn't any good. I might run out of fret, fret wire trying to do it this way. I don't know. We will find out. Either way, Hello, Mr. B. He's floating around again. Yeah, so that's a little long. So let's see if I can do this. All right.
Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to give this a whirl. A little bit of super glue in there. But Here we go. camera shut off so I don't know how much you're going to see but we've, got, we've gotten to the heel part so I can't really get a support under it so we're going to come to about right here which is where the end of the dovetail approximately is and then we're going to have to get up under there with a, a block of wood or something to support the soundboard as I hammer.
maybe. Maybe. Well, that's all for now. Join me in the next video when I bevel the fret ends and level the frets. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Later.